Good morning, it's Friday, April 25th, 2025. In this video, I'll give you the latest details on what the models show and how extreme this severe weather outbreak will become for the far northern plains and parts of the Midwest. To start the video, looking at the latest Storm Prediction Center outlook for Monday, April 28th, as you can see, they have expanded the 30% risk for their southwest to far eastern Kansas and northeastern Missouri, while also expanding northeast into far western Wisconsin and southeastern Minnesota. Now, within the 30% risk highlighted here, there will be the risk for very large to giant hailstones, some exceeding 3 inches in diameter, and a few strong tornadoes and severe wind gusts exceeding 75 plus miles per hour. But that's not all. The storm prediction Center has highlighted much of the upper Midwest, the Ozarks, and southern high plains with a 15% risk of severe weather that is being maintained. Now, when we time this out on the latest 06Z GFS model that just is currently rendering right now as I am making this video, so this is hot off the press. And what we have here is a developing surface low on the lee side of the Rocky Mountains here in Colorado with a pressure of 989 millibars. And what the that's going to do it's going to bring up our moisture off the gulf here into texas into oklahoma you can follow these isobars where we have higher pressure over here and we get this wind that comes off the gulf into the high plains and midwest and that's going to help to advect our moisture so once we go into say monday morning Things are really going to ramp up here, especially over the Dakotas, over Iowa, over Minnesota, over Wisconsin. And this is where we are going to begin to get some stronger showers and thunderstorms. Most of these will be elevated, though, for Monday morning, as I mentioned in yesterday morning's video. But these will still pose a risk for at least some sub-severe hail and marginal wind damage, possibly 50 to 60 miles an hour with some of the in most intense elevated storms. And you can see that right here with this splotchiness of green on the simulated ra radar reflectivity forecast precipitation type, showing us that there will be some elevated convection to start your morning commute here with some snow over portions of Wyoming and western Montana as we get temperatures that are cold enough aloft to bring in that snow down to right around, say, seven to 6,000 feet, perhaps. Now it's once we get into Monday afternoon, people living in portions there or most of Wisconsin into Iowa, into Minnesota, not really showing much here in Kansas or Missouri yet until later on in the evening hours, there will be significant severe weather potentially, and I want to make it clear here, possibly a serious severe weather outbreak here consisting of very large to giant hailstones, three plus inches in diameter, and the risk for a few strong tornadoes within this environment because we're going to have a lot of ingredients that are going to come together here that I am going to be showing you. But for 21Z, this is for, let's see here, this is for 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time, and that's where we have have the strongest showers and thunderstorms and since these will be more than likely surface based these will be posing all significant severe weather hazards um, right out ahead of the dry line and within the free warm sector and then as we go into right around say about 9 to 10 p.m central daylight time here from northern texas into oklahoma into missouri as well as iowa this is where we are going to get initiation along that dry line yeah this is your dry line that's in place and here is your cold front this bent back occlusion where that arctic high or whatever high we have there pouring in that colder air out of the north and as these two collide we are going to get a lot of showers and thunderstorm development overnight into early tuesday morning and like always all severe weather hazards here are expected especially with northeastward extent where we have better forcing better um, rising motion and better instability and moisture overlap it's where we're going to have more significant severe weather now, by Tuesday morning here for Indiana, for the Ohio Valley into Missouri, as well as Indiana, or not Indiana, for Oklahoma, for eastern Oklahoma, that's where we do have the potential here for an isolated significant thunderstorm here to wake up your morning. So yeah, you're going to have your alarm clock 
um, in place. The sky, the thunderstorms will be your alarm clock. Make sure you have the alarms ready to go for your weather radio just in case if there is a tornado warning or any kind of weather alert that is issued by your local weather office. Now, by Tuesday afternoon, storms will in reinitiate along this cold front that is draped across Oklahoma into central Texas. This is a pretty widespread risk, and that goes all the way into the northeast into portions there of, say, Vermont and New Hampshire. So keep that in mind for your Tuesday evening commute. Could be pretty dicey on the roadways with some of these storms containing a risk for some small hail, maybe quarter size since our lap straights are not going to be overly steep like we will see on Monday for the Northern Plains, but nonetheless will be steep enough to at least give us some enough instability for strong enough updrafts that some of that hail could be about the size of quarters or smaller and some damaging wind gusts exceeding 50 to 70 miles an hour and the risk for a tornado or two. Now, there is still some disagreement here between the GFS model and the European model, the ECMWF, on how this all evolves. This is Monday morning on the Euro, and as you can see, the elevated convection is there on both of the models, but what it's going to have a hard time with is the initiation in the afternoon, and that's because we do have have a little bit of a lid or known as cap or in other words in meteorological terms we would call this convective inhibition a uh, the amount of energy that prevents an air parcel from rising to the level of free convection or the the free convective layer where um, without any forcing you will get these parcels that rise buoyantly because the environmental lapse rate is colder than or the temperature lapse rate is colder than the environmental lapse rate that is. And so what we end up seeing here is elevated convection because the instability is going to be above the surface and not necessarily where your feet are. Now, this is for Monday afternoon, 21Z, similar to the GFS here. It does show that storms do initiate, but now we're getting a little bit of a better idea that there is going to be some Boeing segments, some supercells, especially right in here. This is the zone that I'm circling in black that I am really concerned where we get best backing of the winds to the southeast. Underneath southwesterly flow or even south-southwest flow, and that's going to lead to enlarged curved wound hodographs with streamwise vorticity for organized convection to pop up here. And some of this could be quite intense. Yeah, we can be looking at strong tornadoes for sure, along with, again, some big-time hail stones. And then this continues throughout the overnight hours of Tuesday, or Monday into Tuesday, with storms reinitiating here. And boy, these are some pretty intense storms here that the Euro is picking up on. A pretty big MCS, it looks like here, bowing out across um, central Indiana, so Indianapolis, Kokomo, Indiana. If you are in Toledo, Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, uh, Detroit, Michigan, all the way back here towards the DFW area into central Oklahoma, northern Arkansas, like Fayetteville there, as well as St. Louis, Missouri, Springfield, Missouri. Just be aware, Tuesday afternoon could be downright stormy here with the risk for damaging wind gusts, some large hail, especially with southward extent here where there's better form of instability and steeper lapse rates overlapping the air mass and the risk for a tornado or two since we should have enough wind shear to at least get a few spin-ups along this boundary. Now it's a good idea that I show you all the very latest severe weather setup for Monday, the 28th of April here, and we're going to walk this through with great detail here. We're going to first look at our wind dynamics, then how much instability, surface heating, and moisture will be given getting involved here for Monday's severe weather outbreak that shapes up here across the northern plains and parts of the Midwest. So starting off, this is a look at the 500 millibar height chart here and wind um, jet stream forecast. This is at 18,000 feet above the surface. And what we have here over California is this trough of lower pressure. Now, this is going to kind of stall out and just kind of get really twisted up within a larger scale trough like pattern. As you can see here, here's another trough and here's this trough. So these two are going to kind of phase up somewhere over here in the four corners. And what we end up seeing here as we move forward 
we end up seeing this kind of get absorbed very gradually uh, right here. It just kind of gets all kind of bottlenecked where parts of the energy here move into the northern plains and some of it gets less left behind. And that's why this trough here is not going to really be strongly negative tilted. But there is going to be enough of a tilt here and enough upper level wind support that we are going to have some pretty insane kinematics here, especially in the upper half of the atmosphere from about, say, 10,000 feet and above, where we have winds here anywhere between about 70 to 90 knots. That's pretty strong. Overspreading the warm sector into Iowa, as well as portions there of Nebraska, as well as Kansas. Now, when we look at the 850 millibar wind plot here from Pivotal Weather, you can see high plains here for Sunday night into early Monday morning. The low-level jet ahead of that trough is going to really get going. We are talking near hurricane force winds here over central Kansas, over Nebraska. Yes, you heard me right. 64 knot winds is considered hurricane force, and that's what shapes up here. So some pretty intense kinematics here going to help evict some drier air above the boundary layer, which is going to be right around one kilometer thick. And that's where we have our dew points that are going to be very high into the low to mid 60s underneath this EML or elevated mix layer. Now, by Monday afternoon, that wind jet uh, overspreads pretty much the northern plains and parts of the Midwest here of Missouri, where we have winds 40 to 50 knots. Now, another uh, wind map that I wanted to show you is at the surface. So our surface winds here, a snapshot of that is for Monday afternoon here. And you can see winds 15 to 25 knots or about 18 to 31 miles an hour at the surface. And that is going to introduce some decent low level wind shear and streamwise vorticity for these storms to organize within. Okay. And that's going to uh, lead to effective bulk shear magnitudes here of around 50 to 65 knots, which is more than sufficient for a um, very organized convection, especially if we get enough capping that is not strong enough. It can keep these storms isolated from hitting each other or from interfering with each other, especially if we do get some upscale growth. And that is why I think we have a pretty big tornado threat and hail threat on the way for Monday because of how isolated and scattered in nature this could end up being. But of course, we won't know until we get closer to the event once our high resolution models get into range. Now, with that being said, with the wind dynamics and the vertical wind shear that is going to be in place here, enough surface heating is going to be taking place out ahead of this because we're not going to be looking at a whole lot of cloud cover here due to that capping inversion. Maybe some cirrus overspreading the region, but not enough to prevent a lot of surface heating over central Iowa, where we have daytime highs that are going to be climbing all the way up into the low to mid 80s and upper 70s out ahead of this dry line. And even behind the dry line, temperatures are going to be awfully warm. And that is why it's called the dry line, because it's not a cold front, because you're not seeing temperature change with distance with time as that sweeps its way through. And so what you end up seeing here is very warm temperatures in the low to mid 80s in parts of the Midwest and the Northern Plains with enough moisture here. Look at this dew points advecting or 60 degree dew points advecting all the way into central Minnesota, most of Wisconsin, as well as down here in across the Ozarks and the Midwest into the deep south here of Texas where you have dew points anywhere between about 64 to 68 degrees. That's a pretty humid air mass that is going to be overspreading the warm sector because of that gulf moisture racing northward out ahead of this developing surface cyclone over the northern plains and over Wyoming and Colorado. Now, of course, you have a lot of moisture. We have enough surface heating and with very steep lapse rates here on the order of eight to nine degrees Celsius. That is very, very steep. Me and Ethan B were talking about this um, last night with a two hour um, Zoom call. 
And yeah, we're pretty concerned about this. This is a very well-defined EML that is going to be advecting over the warm sector here. While there is some capping that is going to be involved here, that doesn't necessarily mean that there won't be thunderstorms along that dry line because any storms that do develop along the dry line or out ahead of it or just maybe say 50 miles out ahead we could see some big big time hail producer storms some of which we could see three inch four inch hailstones there are some analogs speaking of hail that are in the iowa region northern missouri in this area i picked a few soundings that did indicate that there could be some hailstones exceeding five inches in diameter. That is DVD size hail that could materialize within this environment because of how steep the lapse rates are going to be. And that's going to contribute to a lot of instability. As you can see here, this is the amount of thunderstorm juice that we have in the atmosphere. And the higher the numbers, the more thunderstorm juice we get and the strong, more violent updrafts we can get. And with enough directional and speed shear, we can get strong to intense tornado production, especially along the triple point. Right in here is where I am really concerned about the best tornado chance that we have had thus far, this far north, where again, we could see um, a few tornadoes, a few of those of which could be intense or, or more likely strong with at least one or two intense EF3 plus tornadoes within this environment. Now, if you found this video very helpful, detailed and informative, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that bell notification icon to make sure you get all notifications on the YouTube channel. Actually check on your phone, on your tablet, on your computer, on your TV, to make sure you get all notifications here on the YouTube channel so you don't miss any of my future weather updates here that I present to you all, especially with the upcoming Atlantic hurricane season that is expected to be slightly to well above average with activity. And lastly, leave a comment in the section below. Let me know what your thoughts here on the severe weather are going to be for your area. Are you affected? Could you see a strong tornado in your area? Please let me know. I will be very curious on will you see a strong tornado in your area? And not only that, be sure to check out our Weather Force Discord server. There's a link in the description below this video and also that periodically pops up here during the video as well. Well, that's going to do it here in the home weather office here on your Friday. April 25th, 2025. Take care, folks, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow.